Good evening, televiewers. Uh, you're welcome to today's edition of Prime Art on My Media Prime. We, this day, as uh, usual, are going to be looking at how to make money, uh, how to become rich and become influential so that we can live fulfilled lives uh, in our families, in our communities, and in Cameroon, Africa, as a whole. Today, we are going to be looking at how to create wealth. What does it take? at our individual levels what uh, will it take for you who is watching me to become rich uh, what will it take for your wife to become rich what would it take for your child to become rich if you're a student you're a worker whoever you are just get your pen paper pencil because you may make errors and you will have to erase mm -hmm. when mr buji and the rest are talking mm -hmm. to get down uh, those uh, tricks on how to become excessively rich and influential in our communities today we are going to be discussing this with uh, the experts who are in the house already from tex uh, global we have mr buji liantin who is always there to tell us how to uh, make money good evening and welcome thank you mr Dio. it's always a pleasure to be here and to share with our wonderful audience and today is going to be an impactful one looking forward to learn from you as well as share <laughs> knowledge because I'm realizing that our audience are getting more powerful every day. Okay. Um, we are also in the company of Mr. Neighbor Paul. He is an ambassador of Audacity of Success. Audacity of Success took place in uh, Douala last week. Yes, I um, Good evening, Mr. Neighbor. Welcome. Good, good evening, Mr. Leo. Um, hello, televiewers. I'm so happy to be here today to give you a review how uh, Audacity of Success was a success and we are going to be sharing ideas as always and i trust in you to contribute so that we will exchange ideas and empower each other okay uh we are also um in the company of um, miss uh, lorna rica good to see she is uh, the marketing manager for shep academy they call her miss l uh, good evening and welcome good evening mr leo good evening to everybody I am happy to be here and I'm looking forward to us having a pleasant time sharing new ideas on how we can amass so much wealth for ourselves. Mm. Um, Mr. Teke was supposed to be here but seemingly he's still caught in traffic and we hope he joins us before the program runs out. Um, I promise to, to present this award that I received last week in, uh, in Yaoundi. I was awarded by the Guardian Post. Um, so I said I will present it. Uh, I was supposed to present it on Tuesday. I did not, but I said, okay, let me use the opportunity in the middle of great minds to say <laughs> this is what I got as um, an award uh, once again. Thanks to you, uh, because uh, without you guys, we won't be encouraged, inspired mm -hmm. to do the work we are doing. So I will just dedicate this to all of you who watch us every day who are sending messages contributing and um, I can only say thank you to you all we are going to start our discussions on how to create wealth at the individual uh, level I'll start with you Mr. Buji um, they say having money becoming wealthy um, will require a mastery of what money is all about because um, it will require a habit on what money is all about. Uh, that habit, uh, would, 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 the habit that you are going to uh, demonstrate will determine whether you are rich, whether you are going to be poor, whether you're going to be sad. That habit is going to determine whether you are uh, happy and a host of others. Yes, Mr. Leo, uh, thank you very much. And uh, before I continue, I must say congratulations for your victory for the mm. award. Mm, this and award. It is well yes. merited. Yes. <laughs> it is well merited. We thank the audience. Yes, that is, of course, you are making a difference at an individual level. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are talking about world creation from the angle of an individual. Then you see uh, nobody is going to come and save you. You cannot wait on the government. You cannot wait on your parents. You cannot wait on one rich uncle somewhere to make you wealthy. These things start from you. And when I talk about starting from you, it starts from your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching us, you need to answer some of these questions. If you've looked uh, in your family around you, in your community, and you've not seen any rich person, then 
it is a challenge for you and a call that you need to be the first rich person in your community, in your family. Don't say your father was not rich, your uncle was not rich. In fact, no rich person has ever come from your village, so you cannot be rich. So the question is, how can you become rich? So you need to start, you need to examine where you're coming from so that you will know where you are going to. And it starts from what? The mindset. You must acquire the mindset of a wealth creator. You must be able to learn and relearn. Learn the game that money people know. Learn money habits, good money habits. Mm. What is it that the, the rich people do that mm. the poor don't do? Mm -hmm. That's at an individual level. The government will not definitely teach you mm -hmm. what the, the rich people do and the poor people don't. Now, if we are looking at it at that direction, how do you actually acquire these um, world creation skills if not if you cannot inherit them from somebody mm. just to note that um they say our habits are the cause of our wealth our habits are the cause of our poverty happiness sadness stress good relationships good health whatever we are is uh, determined by the attitude or the habits we adopt yes the, the, the attitudes we adopt mm -hmm. okay look at it for instance world creation goes with money mm -hmm. so let's put it this way if you are that type of person that if someone gives you uh, 1000 francs the next thing that you're thinking about where do I spend this money if somebody gives you a million francs CFA the next thing is oh I want to buy a good shoe I want to buy uh, a good dress I want to spend it in the club so that is it's your own decisions those are your personal decisions and they affect you and people who if you don't have good money habits like uh, saving they say if you don't put your, your money to use the money is going to leave you mm -hmm. so if you're that type of person that money is round in your hand and you cannot do anything with it then it will go to the person who knows how to use knows it. how to use it mm. okay uh, mr uh, neighbor the C uh, to be able to create wealth, you have to do what they call automate your finance. Uh, automating your finance will require you plan uh, to be to, to for your finances to be on auto uh, pilot. When once you're receiving the money, the money should already have a clear destination. Mm -hmm. Yes, without which uh, you may be it, it may be very difficult for you to manage what comes. In. That's very true, Mr. Liu. You bear with me that the main issue here is not that. We are not earning money, but the question is what we do when we earn the money. Because uh, if you are watching out there, just take a pen and paper and you write how much has passed through your hands this year. And you try to question yourself where that money has gone to. You begin to think as if there's somebody that's actually swindling your money out of your yes, pocket. There's one, of one mommy in one the village, in the swallow village up, yeah. who's swallowing your money. There's uh, one neighbor, or mm -hmm. usually in Douala we talk of rats and, and landlords who are swindling our money. Of course, no. Nobody is spending your money just because you don't have money habits. You don't when your money enters your hands. You don't you don't have plans that you predetermine that that money will go to. So when the money enters your hand, as money is what it is, when it enters your, your hand, usually the brilliant ideas that you had initially will usually wipe out. And then when you squander the money, before you know it, those ideas will come back and you start feeling like somebody had robbed you of your money. So. Before you start getting that money, before you're, you're planning that money should enter your hand, start planning where that money is going to go straight as it enters your hand. And when it enters, don't say, no, let me buy a bottle of drink and take and swallow first before I am going to put part of this money in what I was planning. Because the truth is that when you start doing, taking that water drink, the next thing is that your friend is going to come around and you're going to offer a drink to your friend. The next thing, another come around, before you know it, that money is going to get finished. So when you are planning if you think that you are going to create wealth and grow wealth and live a wealthy life if you don't have money right now start thinking like somebody who has money start planning on what you can do with money if the money enters your pocket and once it enters no matter how small it is start doing that thing that you in initially stated that you want to do because if you're waiting that the money should accumulate before you start doing that thing of which you don't have those habits that would permit you to accumulate money that money will always pass and slip in between your fingers and go to those who understand and can well be a better uh, manage money okay um miss l we must also we want to create wealth we must have this investment attitude investment is the most effective way to build wealth uh, you don't uh, need so much to invest 
in creating wealth, mm -hmm. the part of investment cannot even be over at my side. Okay. It's very important. Money is the one thing that enjoys moving up and down. Like it's very movable. It loves when it's moving. Now, if we want to be able to have more, to be able to amass more for ourselves, we have to learn how to multiply it. And the act of investing involves it's, uh, the product of multiplication. Mm -hmm. If you want to be able to multiply wealth, you have to learn how to invest. And now, when talking about investment, I discovered that so many people have lost the, the definition, the misunderstand the definition of investment. Mm -hmm. And they think like when we talk about investment, it's just maybe to give your money, like what we do in our company in Text Global, they feel like, okay, that's the only um, type of investment you can do. There's investment in real estate. Mm -hmm. The fact that I decide to, to uh, to put money, let's say in a in a buying land and selling, it's a means for me to be able to make back more. Now the aspect of investment is that you put in your money in something that can be able to work for you when you are not there. Trust me, you cannot be able to get so much money by just depending on the salary that you're getting. A few days ago, somebody said something to me that we keep having expenses, but our salaries are not changing. That if you want to depend on your salary, you will die. I heard this from a teacher saying that, that if you depend on your salary, you're going to die. Meaning that I have to invest. But now, so many of us are afraid of investments because we're being too overprotective with money. Money that you try you struggle to keep will always run away from you. Money goes more to people who can multiply than to people who can keep it. It goes more to people who can send it out. It's like what um, our boss is to say, that when you send out money, it goes and then he invites his brothers and his sisters. Imagine that you're keeping the money with you. It has no means to step out, to meet its brothers. We're talking about brothers, we're talking about other currencies to come in. It has no opportunity to meet other people. Now, when money sees that, okay, you're taking good care of it, and that you are sending it out into other in, in other avenues. Why it's moving up and down is like networking. It gets to meet other figures. You send out five thousand. When five thousand is going out in the marketplace or in the in the investment spot, mm -hmm. it's meeting ten thousand. It's meeting two thousand francs. It's meeting one thousand francs. And I begin to tell them that okay, this person now this person that sent me out is capable to of managing all of us. And now the five thousand begins to to uh, invite his brothers, inviting the 10,000, inviting the 2,000. And now these other figures will want to follow that 5,000 because they know that if they get into your hands, you will still give them the opportunity to step out. So that is how money works. If you want to, if you want to get money and just keep it, thinking that, okay, it's when I'll keep it that I'll be able to have so much. Um, um, there's somebody that challenged my mind one time. It's somebody that I know that has money. And one time we're talking, he said, do you know that if all my investment platform closes today, I'll be broke? And I said, why? He said, because I don't keep money in the bank. I was like, what do you mean by I don't keep money in the bank? I know all of us invest, but at least some goes to the bank. And he says that he just feels that whenever he keeps his money in the bank, he ends up eating all of the money. Because he feels like there is already an emergency spot. It becomes a spot where when a problem comes up, he quickly runs to it. Mm -hmm. But when he looks at his investment, he's like, okay, it's already directed, like what you spoke about, autopilot. He already mm -hmm. knows where this money is going to. Mm -hmm. So it feels like nothing should just make him just remove that money like that and use it anyhow. So if we want to get so much wealth, we should be able to get to the level where we move from just getting salaries to the point where we save and to the point where we invest. When you invest, you have enough to save at the end of the day. That's the, 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 myst the, myst the mystery about investment that so many people don't understand. So investment is very important and it concerns creation of wealth okay uh we want to create wealth i hope that you are taking down the notes wherever you are watching us uh, from across uh, the nation and uh, beyond but uh, also if you want to create um well we need to stop or ditch some of our daily uh, daily uh, some small daily purchases like uh, you move around you want to get coffee you want to get this, you want to get um, the nyama is passing, you get uh, it for 700, uh, you move down, you see Mami Eru, you take it for 2000 and the money is, is going, huh? Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, last month I was uh, actually um, teaching at Shape Academy and mm -hmm. we we're talking about uh, bad money habits. Mm -hmm. And what you've just mentioned is just one of them. So now, I will just there are some habits that you must avoid if you really want to create wealth mm. for instance shopping when you are bored yeah there's some people that when they are bored they, they shop they just go shopping I know a lot of friends who actually do like that you also have people who shop for status mm -hmm. like um, I just want to 
let me I, let me buy this thing people are buying the latest phones the latest iPhones you want to buy it people are buying the latest dress you want to buy it those are the things that remove money from your pocket you don't just shop when money comes into your hands what is it what do you do with it then again there are some little things that are very minute that you might think like um, chewables snacks they look very uh, small but if you know the amount of money that you can spend on them for over a month you just say okay this day I just, I just need to take ice cream for 500 francs if you can take ice cream for 500 francs every uh, let me just say every afternoon in a, a month you must have spent 15,000 francs that's just for your ice cream what if you take ice cream you, you take small drinks maybe you take another drink of 500 francs that's already 30,000 francs and other little things that you might not know that are removing money from your pocket at the end of the day you realize that you are putting yourself into more trouble you also need to avoid borrowing because there are some people that if they have a problem the next thing is they are borrowing and which means now at an individual level you need to also avoid being emotional because uh, I myself was a victim at the time that I thought that I could save the world just everybody if you call me that you need uh, 10,000 francs from me the old me would have just said okay this my friend needs is really crying that he needs 10,000 francs I don't have 10,000 francs but because it is very difficult to say no I call another person and borrow 10,000 francs and I give the person so if with those things you realize you entangle yourself because there are times that you cannot say no in one of the classes that I attended taught by uh, Wango Boris I think he will be in Shape Academy uh, on the 30th, 30th yeah. and it is for a, a free class now he said if you will have people there is always set aside a charity um, a charity okay. fund that's the first time I learned about that <laughs> set aside a charity fund if people call you that oh I am sick okay look if you still have something in that charity fund give them if you don't have it is okay the other money that you budgeted was not meant for those things so you must uh, you must write down a budget and stick to it which means money for food is money for food your transportation is for your transportation so any other thing that is coming up it is not in your budget so it is not part of your it's not your business it's none of your business if someone invites you for a wedding within that time if you see that you if, if you want to be wealthy you not have to do it because you want to prove any point you must do what your finances are capable of carrying you along because if you go as far as borrowing or stepping into the finances like the ones that you've dedicated that this one are for your tight this one are for your children's school fees and you take the money to do another thing with it you are creating a hole in your finances and you must feel it money doesn't will not when money when you are when your bills are demanding they are not reasonable your okay bills are not reasonable okay um he raised an issue mr niba yeah. i think it is also common with all of us here that is uh, actually spending for what we need absolutely and not uh, uh, there are some expenditures that are, are wasteful for example i uh, mr leo i'm a journalist i use a lot of uh, phone so um, I will require a phone that would uh, match what I do. But we have many persons who essentially use a phone in either mm -hmm. Facebooking or WhatsApping <laughs> and, uh, and calls. You f they buy phones for 300, 400,000 francs. You see somebody who lives in the quarter mm -hmm. and uh, says, I don't have money. But the pair of shoes that he buys is 60, 70,000. He buys and keeps there. Mm -hmm. And uh, lots of such expenditures. Yes, uh, you must agree with me that we, we have lived society to push us to live by their standards and not by our own standards. Because most of these people that buy these things, as you were saying, they don't do it actually because they see the need or because they like to do it. It's because they want to maintain a particular status in the society. That doesn't matter. Uh, Wango Boris once said, it is useless for you to be buying stuff to impress, uh, buying stuff with money that you don't have to impress a world that doesn't care. You, you see that most of this time when you are buying these things, you are buying so that when you wear and pass, people should actually see and appreciate that, okay, Paul, you are looking so great today, Mr. Liu, you are looking so great today, but they don't actually care because somebody, if you, you, you ask those that you were trying to impress what you wore two days ago, they will not even remember, mm -hmm. but you were wearing that for them. And, and, and something on the other hand, I'm, I'm so afraid, sincerely, let me talk to the young people out there, 
I'm so afraid about the depression that might hit us in the next five, ten years. Because the rate of peer pressure, the rate as, at which social media is pressurizing young people out there who want to keep the standards of what they see on social media, mm -hmm. is going to push them so much into depression. I, I know what I'm saying. I, I, I weigh what I'm, I, I see on social media and what I see in, in, in real life, and it is scary. You know, people, people take what they see on social media to want to live it like it's, it's real life. I mean, is, 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 social media is some kind of stage where people just go and stage there, play, play a particular scene there, which is not their real life. But young people out there are doing everything possible to look like those who are staging. And at the end of the day, they put themselves in a lot of shitty situations as far as their finances are concerned just because they want to maintain a status that is just it's just some kind of uh, it's, it's some kind of air that is it's some kind of vapor that is going to uh, disappear in the near future but mind you i will always say that the kind of things you do online and see you want to maintain it doesn't matter but offline you have the consequences as you see those things online and you try to maintain it you involve yourself in getting money here and there you know, trying to maintain that status Time will come when those holes that you dock will be pulling you. The more the person you borrowed from will be pulling you. Maybe the school fee money that you, you took to buy a dress or a phone because you wanted to keep the standard with your friend, the, the deadline will reach for you to pay that school fee. And of course, Mr. Abuji Riley said those things they don't have emotions, they don't care. Mm. The once the deadline line reaches, you have to pay. Um why I'm raising this, Miss L, is that um we are talking about wealth creation. Mm. And almost every young person will tell you today that I don't have money to start business. I don't have money. Um, but go in, go and check out their wardrobes. Maybe they have ten pairs of shoes. Each shoe costs uh, above forty thousand francs. Mm -hmm. Look at the dresses. Uh, wonderful dresses, yeah. twenty thirty five thousand francs. You see, um, I don't have capital to start a business or uh, to save. But the human hair, the <laughs> media, <laughs> maybe five of them, uh, each cost uh, 100,000 francs. That is wealth that is kept somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. And without <laughs> any profit, it, it generates nothing. But why are we so ignorant that the wealth we seek after is <laughs> inside, inside us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there is something we learned in school that I feel like it's one information or one knowledge that even if we want to. We want to garbage every other information we should not garbage mm -hmm. and simple opportunity cost and scale of preference i've told people always i said that is one information that i will not forget mm -hmm. all through my days in school this little thing that we learned about scale of preference and opportunity cost is very important when it concerns world creation the highest set of persons that i know that spend in this life are ladies mm -hmm. i won't i won't lie I'm sure there's so many ladies who are watching me now. Don't say it. it's not a man talking, it's a woman like you talking. It's a lady like you talking. <laughs> See, ladies spend more than what you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. At one time we sat uh, we were talking and then somebody said something. I, oh, you're not you're not using an iPhone and all that. And I said, I can afford. But what do I really need it for? I don't even know how to operate it in the first place. And they were laughing like in this morning, I said, Yes, I cannot operate it. I don't even know I should stress myself getting an iPhone. And then when they started talking, I said, check all the ladies in the university now. About 95% of them are using iPhones, but none of them know the cost price of the phone they are using. That's what I said. And I said, this is something that they could be able to convert, to be able to empower themselves, but they are doing the wrong way. So the problem is, we don't even know what we need first. We don't know what is necessary. We learned about our needs and our wants. We don't even know what we need. If you know what you need, trust me, you will know how to arrange your finances. You will know what to do. You will know what is needed at the time. And at most of times, we get to distribute our finances to things that cannot produce more money. Mm -hmm. Whatever cannot yield more is not necessary. It's, it's just mere luxury. And of course, it's okay to live a luxurious life, but the problem is that let, your, let the luxury come out from an income that can still have some to be saved and some to be invested. Meaning that if you want to live a luxurious life, when you take your, your capital, calculate that if I get this stuff, how much will be left that I can save? How much will be left that I can invest? If there is no balance, forget it. And if something is not needful at the time, don't invest in it. And now some people say is that they don't have capital. Okay, away from that. One time we sat here on set and I mentioned that finance, like money, is just a part of capital. 
There are many other <laughs> things that you can do. There is social capital that many people don't use. I think that's the most, that's the most priceless cap capital. Social capital and your attitude. It's very important. Now we were we were talking and then somebody used to, somebody said uh, something. He said that he he had uh, somebody wanted to buy something. I uh, forgotten the real story. He want, he said they wanted to buy something. Okay, I think it was a few days ago we we're watching Ubon King, and then he made mention of something like this. We we're watching Ubon King together with our boss, and then he said something that then he had some supplies that he could not have, he could not supply, but he said he can connect somebody, and now he got somebody and connected a person to do the supplies, and he said that he had two million. Um, Two million uh, naira from that little transaction. All what he need to, to need to do was to know the person we needed and then know the person who was supplying, and that's it. And two million two million naira made him where he was seated. But most of us were not willing to be able to use our senses wisely. Even the people we want to associate with, we associate with people who cannot add to our lives. People who have no idea about business, who are going nowhere, they have no destination. Even the Bible says that can the blind lead the blind. Seriously, now, you already know that you have your own areas that you're blind at. And now, you are following somebody who is blind as well. Mm. There is no need trying to compete, especially ladies. There is no need trying to compete. You're competing with nobody. The only competition you have is yourself. So there's no need for you packing things that you could be able to convert them into assets. Just piling them. And then you are sick. People wear expensive hair. People use big phones that they have not eaten. Mm -hmm. Like, they are dying of hunger. But... He was in front of 500. Yes. 800,000. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't have money. I don't know why. You're working with somebody's land. <laughs> You're working with land in your hands. <laughs> and I'm telling you, supermarket in your hands. There is no need. I'm focusing more on the ladies on this part I'm talking about. There is no need doing okay. all of that. The ladies need to start um, <laughs> thinking of uh, creating wealth. Uh, they are already yes. wealthy. Most of them, most of you are already wealthy. You have more capital than myself, <laughs> sincerely. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Only your cap alone can get me a visa to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> that I've been looking uh, for a while now. Chris, good evening. Writing from Douala. Good evening to you, Chris. Yes, if you have more, just give me. I'll be happy. Uh, Mr. Liu, kudos to you and the team uh, from Tex Global. If you have a passion for farming and you want to do it a business, where do you start from? I'm Neba uh, Nzoli, writing from Liberia. Can you just write to also? Uh, there is uh, Mr. Tekes number under the screen. Just write to them or call after the program. They will explain better to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. It's Thierry from Douala. Please, members of the panel. Those it uh, mean that, does it mean that one works only to continue investing? One needs to take care of the body. That works for it. Yeah, but I think that we we take care more of the body than, <laughs> than the investment. Than than the investment. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu and the crew. Congratulations uh, for your meritorious award. Honor is gratitude. Honor is inspired us to do more and others to be inspired. God bless you and your media prime. Team Evangelist Felix Egbe Eno, writing from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Evangelist. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Congratulations for the wonderful work you have been doing. Salif, writing from Yaoundé. Thank you very much, uh, Salif. Pirlo, writing from Kumbase. Uh, wow, congratulations. It is a reward for a good job. More grace. Okay, Pirlo, uh, good evening to you and everybody watching from uh, the uh, Green City, that's in uh, Kumba. We uh, no, let me take one or two messages here before we continue. Good evening, Mr. Kum, and your panel. I'm Daddy Clay from Boya. More grace to Tex Global and Shep Academy. I know the investment opportunities with Tex Global and how guaranteed uh, my investments with Tex Global. Can you just call the numbers on your screen or you write to me after the program? I will forward their numbers to you. I don't know whether I want uh, Mr. Buji's number or Mr. Neba or Ms. L. Just indicate them. <laughs> Good evening. I love this program. Larry is writing from Moliko Boya. Good evening to you, Larry. Uh, kudos to you, Mr. Liu uh, Biaka, writing from uh, Boyu. I don't know where Boyu is. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and a big congratulations for the award. You deserve even more than that. You are doing a great job in it and may more of such awards keep coming your way. Kiyam Lamesh writing from um, from Bamenda, Abakwa. Now, 
we are talking. I want us to really talk to the young people. Eh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody is craving to have money, yeah. and we are talking about how to create wealth. Mm-hmm. We sit and look at people like Jephobia and say, "Wow, this guy has money." We look at my boss, who has all this. I say, um, mm-hmm. the "Boss has money." Dex Global, they say, is doing well, and those of others. But you have um, most of us would receive money. We may receive money. 20 times a month, uh, yes, but what that money has as used for us is spend. That is, you are waiting for money to come so you can buy a phone, you are waiting for money to come so you can buy a dress to use for a day. Eh? Mm-hmm. Is that not where the problem is? That is, we are not waiting for money to come to keep to create wealth, but the money is meant to spend. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Leo, mm-hmm. uh, let me. Uh, share this quote from Mr. Teke Samuel. Mm-hmm. He says, if it doesn't make money, doesn't it doesn't make, make sense. sense. Okay. So, what does this mean? If the dress you are buying doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. If you actually want to build wealth, mm-hmm. you must be conscious about the things that you do. If you went to a party and spent 100000 and spent 500000 there, if it's not going to bring anything to your pocket, it doesn't make sense. So, uh, the young persons must understand. Excuse me, why. Um, Eli. Can you please get through to Mr. Teke through Skype? Uh, try if you can get to him through Skype to join uh, our discussion. Seemingly, you could not make it through the traffic. Yes. So when you look at it, you realize that with world creation, you must understand what is an asset and what is a liability. Mm-hmm. So for let me just break it down for our audience. An asset is that which brings money mm-hmm. to your pockets. And a liability is what removes money from your pocket. Like the human hair that you buy for 200000 mm-hmm. that's a liability. It removes money from your pocket. Oh, the straight. iPhone that you have, <laughs> that um, you snap beautiful pictures and you post, and people like, those are liabilities. So anything that removes money from your pocket is a liability. And if you want to become, to build wealth at an individual level, you have to start acquiring assets. Mm-hmm. Which now I will challenge those who go and look at your wardrobe. If you have a lot of expensive dresses there, sell them and buy business assets. That is wealth now. Yes. And we say we, do, we are poor. Yeah. Yes. I spoke, to, I spoke to a young man and he told me that, can you buy my suit? <laughs> I said, wow, it means that you're understanding what mm-hmm. is the meaning of an asset. I told people that normally, make sure that at least within every two months, acquire a business asset. I have a, a, a group of young persons that I, I mentor and I've told them, do you see this? Every month, ma- every two months, make sure you come and acquire a business asset in Tex Global. You see? Because you have investment packages that for everyone is mm-hmm. not like for the rich. No, everybody can do it. Even students, I described some packages. The packages between 100 and 200,000 I described as student packages. So that is, you, they, they contribute an, uh, an habit of buying asset or building asset that will eventually bring wealth mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. Like I would say, if you want to build a house, like you want to create wealth, Robert Kiyosaki says your house is not an asset, it's a liability. Your car, except it's used for business purposes, it's a liability. So you must be able to differentiate between those things that will make you poor and the things that will make you rich Mm -hmm. and for you to be rich you must continuously build wealth and one of the wealth creation principles says to create wealth you must increase your means not reduce it living beyond them Mm -hmm. what does this mean don't think that you'll be comfortable living in the village because you are afraid of paying rent in town Mm -hmm. you will never create wealth that way don't think that if you, 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 you actually take responsibility, um, let me just say, like in the case, when someone who wants to get married, if you get married and you were not able to take care of yourself, you will not be able to take care of the family. But there is also one thing that those things are going to automatically trigger you to start working hard. You start developing ways on how to create that world. The central idea is be what also learn this. Learn what is called the power of leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is your ability to be able to earn more and more while earning, while working less and less. 
Uh, my problem is that now, when okay, money comes, please, <laughs> we should, we should, we already have capital. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who are who are who are that's two million three millions a year yeah <coughs> and but we we struggle to show off that we can use the best buy the best tv we can buy the mm. best things liabilities yes. you know um but but also worthy of note is um an iphone for for eight hundred thousand francs um a car and the likes uh, could be also important but if you are using them professionally yeah. to meet to to, to 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 sell yourself or maybe do business so that you can make big big money yeah. rather course. than ha having these things and then you are sleeping there of course. of course let me let me let me take it down to the to the lowest um, addiction that mm. every young person is addicted to the time which is the most valuable asset that we have the time that we spend today on watching TV and on social media, mm -hmm. and the money we used on, on on weekly basis, on monthly basis, on yearly basis to buy data. If you are watching out there, just go down, get a pen and a paper, as Mr. Leo said earlier. Mm -hmm. Write down how much time have you spent since you started using social media? How much money have you spent buying data? And then you ask yourself, how much have you generated? In this activity of posting pictures and coming back 30 minutes after or one hour after to see mm -hmm. if people have commented or people have liked mm -hmm. if you if there's an if, if, if you spend more buying data and spend more time watching tv and be on social media and without generating income mm -hmm. then you have a problem a big big problem world creation is so far from you you talked about people receiving money and and not using it for anything i want to talk especially to students out there these are the highest people that money passes through their hands and they don't have any accountability for it you know they will they, they, they call this auntie and lay a complaint call this uncle and lay a complaint call daddy call other brother with the essence of what spending nothing else to spending and what are they spending for just to, to look rich of course in, real, in reality they are broke so the essence the essence if you must be worthy, the essence is not for you to look rich, to show to show forth amongst your peers that you look rich. The essence is to actually look rich, uh, actually to be rich. Look, look at the, the wealthy people in the world. When you when you see Jack Ma, how how are they dressed? Just just when you see uh, Mark, uh, Mark Zuckerberg of, of of Facebook, how are they dressed? Are they are they that flashy? But when they want to talk of their wealth. That's you, you want to look at them physically and look at, at, at how much they, 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 they are worth. And then that's that's a big gap. But our young people today are pushing forward to present themselves to to look like they are very worthy, of which actually they are not. So if you're watching out there and you are really looking so rich and uh, you are having an empty stomach, then uh, you have nobody to blame. You have not started leading yourself to the direction of wealth creation because. It is useless for you to show off out there and come back and sleep in a leaky room. <laughs> you are the one who understands your pain. Mm -hmm. It's needless for you to show off out there that you are living so well and you come back and you sleep with an empty stomach. You, this uh, uncle big boss in the carrefour where you are giving beer to everybody, it is useless for you to give that beer to everybody at the carrefour Why you've not given food money for your wife or your children. That is not the essence of life. The essence is for you as a husband to generate income and grow your family, make sure that they live a comfortable life so much so that you can live in harmony and be able to have a cool head that can permit you to generate more income for the family. Because when you are not able to take that responsibility because the small money that enters your pocket goes to the beer parlor, that is chaos in the house. And the next thing is that maybe your wife is discomfortable, your child is discomfortable, and you, you certainly your children might now start getting into other things in the society that are not going to get to, to societal issues just because they are not able to live the kind of life that they want to live. Not because their father is not earning money, but because Papa is earning money. But when it's 20 feet, Papa starts borrowing beer in the in the that major drinking spot yeah. in, the, in the quarter because they know that salary is going to come very soon. And when he takes the salary, he doesn't go home because he doesn't know. He knows only about spending. His he, his, in, his 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 finances are not uh, on yeah, automatic. He, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is. He, he, not, has, he, has, he has not programmed himself. He has not programmed himself. No, he has I programmed himself. No, when no, I receive 100,000, it goes for investments, yeah. it goes for savings, it goes for uh, this. Yeah. The truth is that he has programmed himself, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah, okay. ignorance, not as if he has not programmed too. ignorance is also playing its part. Yeah. 
in that when it gets to the point where money is getting to your hands and you are not informed about you're not informed about um, about areas where you can be able to put in money and have more mm -hmm. that's where all of this happens because most of most people are not even informed they, they don't know so much about investment and my problem with with us is that this information is now should i say rampant yes it's not everywhere in the country but many people are not willing to expose themselves to such information trust me if you're informed about about um, about systems that you can be able to get involved in. When money comes, that's the first thing that comes to your mind. And the way the way um, success is, when everybody in the family gets the vision of success, even your children will be willing to sacrifice their pleasure to see your to see their father do a good investment. I've seen that happen beside me. I've seen that happen even in our own personal home. Mm -hmm. If you are that type of father, that type of um, a leader, that type of person who can lead their own personal self in such a way that you are able to make others understand that this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. You maybe see, like what he's saying, being a husband or being a, a mother or whatever, you call people and tell, okay, this is the vision now. All of us are supposed to do this. I want to invest in this. So please, I'll have to cut down on this expense. Maybe this month, you, this my daughter, you will not have your money allowance to this amount this month because I want to do this investment. Trust me, when everybody sees another money coming into the family, through what you're about to do, they will understand with you. But the point is that we are not even informed, and we don't want to get informed about. Yeah, the issue is, um, is, isn't it, isn't it also because we do not have specific money uh, goals uh, per year? That uh, yeah. yeah, the number one reason most people uh, don't get what they uh, want is that um, they don't know what they really want. Yes. Um, nobody actually sits down to say, "This is 2021. Uh, by the end of the year, I want to." to raise 20 million, mm -hmm. I want to raise 10 billion, I want to, there are, there are no goals set. Of course, a lot of people start their hair and they have no goals, they don't know what they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And some people know, but they don't put in steps that will, that will push them towards that goal. So someone will say, by the end of this year, I want to make 10 million, you're like, okay, how? And then some people don't even know what they want to, what they want to get at the end of the, at the end of the year, they don't have goals. If you have goals, there's something about money. Money follows ideas. The moment you start thinking about an idea, an idea comes to your mind. Okay, I want to do this. Immediately the idea comes. It has a way it starts attracting money. It's like what we talk about, the law of attraction, when you're sending signals to the universe. Immediately you think of an idea and now you have a costing for that idea. You think about it so much so that everything, every force in the universe begins to act in such a way that the capital for that idea begins to come in. But now some of us, when we... When we when we have this capital coming in, we don't we, we forget about the original idea in the first place. We forget about what we're thinking about before the money came. As you come, you know some people are excited about money. When money gets into their hands, they are I don't know they are very hot, like they agitated. Just want to they want able to know that okay, I have this money with me, and they want to just spend and all that. So goals has an important part to play. If you want to be able to live a life that is productive, that uh, is uh, successful, then you should be able to have goals. And mind you, when you have these goals, don't say, I want to have five million and you're not willing to put in some money. Every goal needs a funding and has a return. But some of us, this is what happened, going back to what you talk about investment, Mr. Leo, it's the same thing that somebody has aligned their, some, some people have aligned their goals for the year. They know what they want to achieve. Tell them now that put money, fuel that vision. Nobody's willing to follow the vision. They're expecting returns from the vision. How? They will go just get from the book and start working. They're not investing. They're not investing. Uh -huh. And you want to get so much, but you're not willing to put in anything. Nobody so wants you have to, sacrifice. to yes, okay. You have to fund it. Then when you fund it, you get returns. And we keep funding, we get returns. That's how the circle runs. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and to the entire Dex Global uh, crew. Uh, Daisy writing from Kumba. Good evening to you, Daisy, and uh, to you, Didi Banderas. Um, hello, Mr. Leo. Congratulations on your award. You deserve more. And please, how can one invest in Tex Global? I'm interested. Thanks, Esther. Um, Esther, I will send you Mr. Buji's number. You will call him and talk with him. Uh, good evening to you, Esther. Uh, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Leo, and the panelists. Please ask the panelists how to create wealth for zero franc. They uh, talk about managing money, whereas you can't manage uh, no being invest what you don't have, okay? Equally, what about the poverty cycle most of us find ourselves in? How can we break through the poverty cycle? Fritz is writing from Limbe. Uh, Fritz, what, um, 
Fritz is asking is exactly what I wanted to ask you, Mr. Buji. Uh, Fritz, just get a pen and, and pen and pen and paper. I'm sure you're going to learn. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, good evening to all your invitees uh, there. With you, sir, I love the program. Julius writing from Mato Village. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu and the panelists. Miss L, that's wonderful. Please keep talking. This Lee Queen Seka writing from uh, Yaoundé. Um, this is Ox, Ox X Trainee. Okay, OIC X Trainee. My regards to all the brilliant panelists, uh, Mr. Liu Kudos, good job and great ideas, uh, Mr. Liu Jerob. Collins is writing from Austria. What's your feeling to you? Liu, congrats. Where is the envelope that accompany that award? I beg for credit. Gideon is writing from Bomenda. Gideon, I don't know whether the envelopes accompany awards in Cameroon, eh? except um, you tell me something about that. Mr. Liu, the economic state that money is what money does which means the ability of money to acquire wealth. Money is wealth, not for those that worship it. Ibaku uh, from Melongo village. Okay, uh, good evening to you, Ibaku. Uh, my question to you is um, that um, it is a mentality, like it's just said uh, from Limbe, that there is no money, so how do we create wealth uh, without money? That is, uh, people don't tell them themselves that they deserve to be rich. Uh, they don't have that, that, that attitude of how rich people think. And um, most of them just believe that, or oh, most of us in our communities, let me not remove myself from it there uh, because it is it's, um, a habit that is also common amongst most of us. Um, most persons believe that they are not worthy to, create, to get great worth. Is that not where the problem is? Yeah, the problem actually starts from the individual level. Mm -hmm. the, the, the state of our mind. What we think that it's world creation. Mm -hmm. What is it that is going to create world for us? Now, look at it. Somebody just said creating world from nothing. Mm. I think I don't know how we are going to do it, but I would devise a way that will make the billionaire mindset compulsory. <laughs> for, for everyone to read it. Please, you want to get rich? Be call me. Call me. Actually, um, I'm taking a contract to sell the billionaire's mindset. So just call me. I'll supply it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> As we are just saying, he's. I, okay, I'm sure I'm going to ask Mr. Teke to give that contract to you fully mm. to mm. take care of that. Mm. I don't think you need money to distribute the billionaire mindset. Mm. But you need the. the, the to be willing, mm -hmm. you need to understand that there are people out there who need this book. They want to read this book, mm -hmm. and if they read this book, they are going to um, to make money. Mm -hmm. they, you're going to make money because they want. How do I get a copy of the billionaire mindset? And definitely, you call Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo connects you to the book, and he makes money. I mm -hmm. said nobody should be poor in the connected economy. Mm -hmm. There has never been a time to be rich like now. The guy who is writing from Limbe, mm -hmm. um, I'm not an expert in the domain, but I'm sure that there are many shops mm -hmm. that are selling things in Limbe. Mm -hmm. Walk up to five of those shops, tell them that I want to help you in selling. Each article you sell, you make a commission. As simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Miss L just talked a while about Auburn King. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love watching him because he's, uh, he's um, very disruptive as, as well as Mr. TK is. So, um, I was watching him today on something he said when he heard about maritime transport, mm -hmm. maritime security, sorry. He used to be like, oh, this maritime security. Anytime he's opening the, the internet, he sees maritime security. Now, he started attending seminars on that. When they are talking about uh, Lagos, he's listening. When they talk about the Gulf of Guinea, he's quiet. To learn so anything that they talked about maritime security he was very interested in he had to learn to have more information about that then one day he started posting about maritime security somebody called him i want can you do you have a company he says i can offer can you offer me this service of maritime security in kenya i told him that okay yeah you can uh, i can offer he says he could offer that uh, service now he called a friend in kenya and say you own this company. There's a US based company that wants us to cover security, do maritime security for them. And the contract is $150,000. Obon King says he did not know what 
he, he did not understand the difference between thousand dollars and yeah. naira. naira. Mm. So, at the end of the day, the he connected the buyer, the 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 person who needed the service mm. to the service provider, and then the man said, "Look, I'm going to give you ten percent of this deal." And when they send his own ten percent, the the man called, "Okay, the deal has been closed. I'm sending you a." 10%. 10%. So he had a Nokia touch. This, <laughs> this small, uh, you remember the old Nokia mm -hmm. phones. Mm -hmm. So the man said, I've sent you this amount of money. So he, he has to send the money to him in Naira. That was about uh, 7 million Naira. 7 point something million Naira. So he took his Nokia touch and calculate, punched the thing and his, his Nokia touch, error, error, error. <laughs> <laughs> so he could not calculate the money. He could not calculate. That was 7 million. When the contract was executed, he had 3.5 million as his own additional 5% commission on the contract. So Obon King was richer, 11 million Naira richer. 11 million at that time was around 33 million francs CFA. So just imagine for connecting somebody to a service. So you cannot say you are poor. Be exposed to information. You must be exposed to information. Go here in Douala, go to Mashi Sentra, go to Anshen Toazem. They are brokers. Well, they just meet you. What do you need, auntie? You say you want to buy a television. They take you to that shop. They already have arrangements with those people. No words. They just bargain. They leave you. You bargain your price. As they are leaving, the, the shop uh, uh, owner settles them. You see people who go home with a hundred, a hundred thousand for just connecting people to opportunities. Mm -hmm. I have, needless to say, we have opportunities. We have businesses mm -hmm. that if you link people up to, they definitely okay. give you commission. Um, let's move over to uh, uh, Mr. Teke Samuel, who should be on standby. Yes, he's there. Uh, Mr. Teke, you certainly have been taking uh, notes. We are trying to express our worry uh, to the fact that many persons really want to create wealth and uh, they say they are poor and uh, without opportunities. But um, from this panel, we think that there are opportunities and that they can become as rich as they, as they desire. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Liu, and good evening to everyone in the studio and uh, all our viewers. Um, this is actually amazing, and um, especially when a question comes up like uh, how to create wealth from zero uh, frank. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people think that is not possible. Um, the, the basic reason is because people are more money conscious than wealth conscious. So they think if they think money, 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 that means they are trying to create wealth. So there is there's a little difference here. If you become more wealth conscious, money follows you. Money in the term of fiat currency, that means the paper we see, the coin and all of that. That is not actually uh, the, the, the whole thing about wealth. The money we talk about here is not actually wealth. So if we talk about wealth creation, we're talking about uh, you being able to go back from the source. And the source of wealth creation has nothing to do with money, has not to do with franc or sefa or naira or dollar or uh, ran or anything. It has nothing to do with that. So, first, what are you supposed to do? I always like saying this, 2018 September, I had both home and abroad as a company and as, a, as an individual, 90,000 francs in the bank. And that money was not withdrawable. It means it was even lesser than initial deposit because the account I was operating on then uh, was supposed to have at least 250,000 francs as initial deposit. But having 90,000 francs, it means the money is non-withdrawable. But how did we get from 2018, September 2018, with 90,000 francs to the level where we are now, where we have been able to create, generate billions? If we had, were looking at money as a startup or as a springboard for us to be able to get to this level, we would never arrive at this stage. So what are you supposed to do? I want to take first from this point, I was just writing while everyone was talking, from the point of selling, you should be able to understand how the world connects to each other. During the audacity of success, I, I brought up a topic and I said, where can we find money? 
So a man with zero franc is supposed to understand first where he or she is supposed to find money or where he's supposed to find wealth. And one of those places I mentioned that you can find money, I said, you can find money in people. So if you understand that first, what are you supposed to do? If I can find money in people, next question to you is, do you stay in an environment where you have people around you? If the question is yes, how dare do you dig money out from this? Or how do you sniff money out of them? That's where sales comes in. So you begin to figure out what can I sell? If I don't have a product, I don't have a commodity, I don't have a service that I can offer, do I have someone who has a service or a product that they offer and they don't know how to sell? Then I have to go train myself, I have to learn, I have to force myself to go talk to someone to buy a particular service, make a negotiation on how much I earn as commission. Truth is, the best, most common way to create wealth or to make money from zero franc is your ability to learn how to sell. And that was why I was teaching people that there's a difference between publicity and marketing. So when you get these two together, you go out, publicize, market, sell someone's product, and you earn commission without anything. Nobody wants to charge you for going to sell their products. For example, the billionaire mindset. There is a commission that is attached to anyone that sells the billionaire mindset. And I told them on the data of success, I said, this book is in the mission of creating at least 5 billion francs by December 2021. And out of these 5 billion francs, 30% of 5 billion francs will be distributed among the people or anybody who will take part in the distribution of this book, in the sales of this book. So you cannot be looking for money to come and sell billionaire mindset. All you need to do first is your willingness and your ability to avail yourself into that mission. So people are confusing it. They generate ideas, they have ideas, they think they need money to execute their ideas. You don't need money to do that. All you need to do is, there are several ways you can create money without any franc in your pocket. And number one of them is, look for people. If you can gather people around you and offer them what they need, they will give you money. Number two, you can create a product. You don't need money to create a product. A product can begin from your ideas generate an idea that will give you a product. If you have a product, what are you supposed to do? You need now to learn how to, how to exchange your product to money. If you learn the law or you attend the school of exchange, you understand how you can give someone your product or your value and the person gives you money. These are all primary uh, models on how anyone can make money from any level of their lives. Nobody on earth grew up or was born with money in their hands. Even those that were born in wealth, wealthy homes, there are certain things they needed to do. They needed their mind to enable them to know how to manage the money they made in their lives or in their families. That's why it's easier to see a, a someone from a rich home getting broke and suffering from poverty because they left their mind with them in the womb before coming out of this world. Poverty. The major cause of poverty is that a lot of people left their minds in their mother's womb. We must learn to grow with our mind. That is where everything begins. It's not money. It begins from your mind. So anybody can become wealthy, can be a billionaire from any stage of their life, with or without physical currency. Okay, Mr. Teke, thank you for that uh, intervention there. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Uh, just your cap alone, I'm almost fainting for it. Shout out to all the viewers and to you all there in the studio. I'm Tiku writing from Cyprus, okay, from North Cyprus. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I want to talk with Mr. Teke. Does he has a WhatsApp number? Mr. Teke, um, is he still there? You, yes, I'm here. I'm yes, here. Um, he says from North Cyprus, he says he needs your WhatsApp number. I don't know whether I should give you a number or that of uh, Miss L or Mr. Buji. <laughs> yes, so any of the numbers that's on the screen right now, they can write that and that's okay. Okay. Um, my brother from North Cyprus, hope you got the message. Um, this one says, uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm from Edwin from Kumba. I love your program. I have something to say. All the policemen in Kumba don't want to see us with phones. If they see you looking good, they will just say you are a scammer 
and they will start asking you for money some of them are moving door to door okay make you so invest the money so don't look good with the money good evening sir i think here in cameroon we are scared to be creative because of too much documents eg high taxes uh is changing gabriel uh writing from uh yes cameroon but this is something that uh, was raised even yesterday because we had a related topic uh, yesterday good evening mr Leo. i wish to ask if i invest uh 000 francs as my asset what can be my interest it's kingsley writing kingsley uh, can you get to the text global team? Um, I want to stay with you, uh, Mr. Teke. This question, um, ask if to invest. Mr. Teke, are you still there? I'm here. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, many young Cameroonians, uh, we were right, we, we spoke yesterday about uh, the magical syndrome in Cameroon where almost everybody thinks that to make it in, make it in Cameroon, they have to work with the government and uh, we're struggling to explain and almost everybody uh, gave the excuse that uh, it's difficult to create a company taxations and a host of others and i said that um i would i would like them to follow this program so that they can understand what it takes to to start a company in uh, in cameroon you have people register companies uh how complex yes, is yes. it yeah um, this is the problem we have is a lot of people are ignorant about the Cameroon system. That's the truth. I was. There are certain laws that are in place that the government has put in place to help small and medium enterprises to grow, to try businesses to succeed. But most people are not aware of these policies, probably because they've not made research or secondly, certain people that are sitting on these policies are actually making money out of it. Uh, for example, I, I got a call from someone, um, I, seen, I think they work in one investment promotion commission, which is the arm of the government that enable, um, especially people in the field of agriculture, to import goods, products, chemicals or machines into Cameroon at a discounted rate at the level of the customs. Now, most people don't know this. I just got the call. I never knew. I've been getting things into Cameroon, all of our products, and we pay a lot on custom duty. And someone, somehow, somehow, I got in contact with someone and said, hey, this is it. This thing has been existing for years, and you can also benefit from it. And thank God for that good uh, uh, Samaritan. So I got it, and I discovered that we've given out a lot of money because we're not aware that there's such policy moves that, uh, that is in place in this country. So first, our people need to understand, need to get back into uh, uh, the law, the code, of Cameroon, uh, your area where you function, there are certain codes and there are certain laws, there are certain policies that bind the area where you function. Go and learn it so that you don't become a victim in the hands of the officials that are in control of that system. The government, I like saying this, most times the government is not really the problem. The officials that are handling certain positions are the cause of most of the complaints we have. And the reason is because the average the average African doesn't have time to go and study how the law works or how the law functions. If we do that, we'll be aware of certain things that happen. So uh, in the area of all of those tax and not everything is, is, is clear. For example, if you run a company that is in the Northwest and Southwest right now, there are certain things you need to follow to give you a tax-free policy that you can uh, do your business in the Northwest and Southwest without actually paying tax. You can be tax free or you pay a discounted price because of the crisis. But most businesses are not aware that such a thing is happening. The government has put that in place for those that are running businesses in the Northwest and Southwest. Question is, how are we supposed to do that? We need to find out. Registering a company is never a problem in this country. It's not. At the level of Limbe, you can get your company registered within two weeks, maximum one month, with a sum of uh, 450,000 or 400,000 francs even and do all your documents and everything and your papers to be, be right. You have your companies registered. It's not a problem there. The policy is, is straight and smooth. But then, like I said, if you don't understand, you fall in the hands of lawyers, you fall in the hands of certain people who tell you, hey, they are going to do this thing for you and everything is difficult and they start stressing the whole process for you. The government didn't make it that way, but the people that run the system 
are, uh, are not helping matters. That's why we have to learn. We have to study the code, how it works. If we do that, it's going to be very easy for us. The system is flexible. But people managing the system, they have made it cumbersome for their own greed. So what are we supposed to do? Let's find, sort out for knowledge on how all of these things are run. I was talking with someone at the labor office. I told them, I said, I think at the level of all of these um, departments at the government, they need to be running maybe seminars or TV programs and educate the average citizen on how some of their departments run. Like at the level office, there are certain things that uh, business owners are supposed to do to protect themselves as business owners from very gullible employees. But most business owners don't know. And so sometimes you stay in your office and an employee gives you a convocation from the labor office because of something that happens. Meanwhile, if you have been able to protect your right, that will not have happened to you. Okay. And when they open up a lot of things to me, I was like, wow, I never knew things like this happen. So let us go and make research. Business owners, let's go and make research. All of these things are easier to get. They are not difficult to work with. Okay, uh, I will we get back to you, Mr. Buji, out here with us in the studio. Uh, we also are unable to, to, to raise the amount of wealth that we desire because we do not take advantage of some of the gifts that come our way, but the gifts and uh, you see that some money just come into your hands and because it is not what you work for, the first thing that comes to your mind is, let me go and spend it. Exactly, uh, Mr. Leo. Mm -hmm. Money, at times we say we, con we spend the money, but do you know what actually happens? Money acts like a spirit when it enters your, your pocket. <laughs> it starts it's like it's pinching you. Do something with me. Mm. Are you going to go and spend the money? Do you, will you go out that night to celebrate just because someone give, gave you a gift without your expectation? But for those who practice uh, good money habits, when money enter them, they actually, what do I do with this money? Not align the money to tell you what to do with it. Because I bet you, if some, if they just give you a hundred million now, if you are not careful, that money would drive you from your house. It would drive away sleep from you, because you are not prepared. You also lack the uh, the, the individuals concern. My lack what you call financial intelligence. Go ahead, say, financial intelligence is your, the ability for you to be able to manage your, your your basic things as concerns finances. Now, when you lack this. I have some uh, a quote I say, uh, money doesn't solve problems, intelligence does. Which means that if you give somebody 100,000 francs who is financially intelligent, he might solve a problem that somebody with a million francs CFA cannot solve it. Mm -hmm. So after having uh, a party, maybe a birthday party, and friends gather, they shower you with money, what should you do with that money? For me, I would advise you, invest it. Look for a platform and invest. Seek for knowledge. Because if you don't have knowledge, as the Bible says, you will perish. You need to have knowledge and have the right things to invest in. Don't hear rumors that people are making money from this and go and put your money into it. You have to study. Just like Mr. TK is saying a while ago, you have to learn something. If you want to do something, find out. In Cameroon now, we have a lot of uh, uh, opportunities where you can, uh, you can invest. Text Buba is just one of many, but you must have the right knowledge. Don't hear that your friends are telling you, if you put your money here, you're going to make money and you go and put your money there. Do your personal research. And it comes back to the fact that how many of you read? We're having a conversation. How many of you read? read? When was the last time you read a book? There are some people that since 2021 started, they have not read anything, not even a newspaper. And you want to actually move ahead. No, you cannot go that way. You realize the average rich man reads thousands of books for instance i for one i there is no way a week can pass without me reading a new book no how can it happen why do i have to read i constantly read to keep myself updated what is it that mr teke did that made him a billionaire that's why before i met mr teke i met mr teke through the billionaire mindset i bought the copy of the billionaire mindset I read it. I started reasoning the way he's reasoning. That's why when we met, we could converse. I already had his state of mind. 
I know what he wants. When I started getting this, like, well, it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Those men that this man likes money too much. <laughs> so I realized that he told me that you cannot waste his time. If you say you are meeting him for a, for a business appointment, let it be a business appointment. You have to be there on time, and you need to start reasoning like um, a billionaire. What is your idea going to contribute? Mm -hmm. so what is your idea going to contribute? Yeah, um, you, you raised uh, something that was already in my question, okay. uh, it's that a serious person who wants to create wealth should spend at least 30 minutes a day reading something positive. <laughs> Let me, let, let, me, let me laugh first because that's something I've been advocating. I mean, uh, reading is something that you can't ignore like a living being. As it is usually said, any stagnant water smells. Mm. Most people, out after education, after their advanced level, after their degree, reading becomes uh, far-fetched from them. In fact, they, they, they even promise themselves that <laughs> as I'm graduating today, even a sign but I'll never read. I mean... Times are changing. So much is changing. And there's no way you can be able to re be relevant and attract words towards you when you don't have a relevant mind. Just imagine you, if you, you did not uh, uh, learn or to understand a, a mobile phone and uh, an Android phone for that matter in recent times, just imagine how much you're going to be missing because you can't operate mm -hmm. an Android phone. I mean, some 20 years ago, these phones were not available. Some people, because they were studying, they, they fabricated the phones. And now, if you must be able to enjoy this phone, you have to study how it functions, and then you, you, you are able to enjoy it. That's the same with wealth creation. What was giving money yesterday might not be giving money today. And for you to be able to understand what is giving money today, you have to upgrade your mind to be able to understand that this is how things are happening today. Reading is, 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 is like it's part and parcel of every person. It doesn't matter whether... It doesn't matter your background. As far as you know how to read and write, mm. it has to be a, a way of life. Constant reading. Because you, you buy dresses to, 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 to make yourself look good. You eat food to make your, your belly, to, I mean, to, to, to nourish your body. Mm. For you to be able to nourish your mind, the only way to do that is through reading books, is through uh, listening to, 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 to audios, watching videos, not any mm. kind of videos or not reading any kind of book, but reading books that will enhance you getting to the direction where you want to go. Because when you talk about reading, okay, people go pick uh, maybe some novels, Charlotte Bronte, which are which <laughs> are the same, <laughs> which are the same like the, the TV series that they are watching and they are reading, and then the, tomorrow they will come and say, okay, you asked me to be reading and I've been reading and nothing has happened. <laughs> and it's not all about reading, please. It's about you reading and applying the knowledge you have acquired in your daily life. Okay. If you read and you don't you, you, don't, you don't change your, your usual habits, nothing will change. In your life, like you read all the books written by Robert Kiyosaki, written by Brian Tracy, and you don't change your daily routines, nothing will change in your life. And mind you, people who read and create wealth, people who are creating wealth will always like to align with people who are creating wealth. If you are going towards a rich person with a mentality to beg, if you beg one twice, the next time you will not have a rendezvous with them. Go with the mindset of contributing to them, and they will in turn contribute in your life. But if you are going to beg, mind you, you are closing the door. You have closed the door. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I just want to throw more light on what uh, Mr. Take says about tax-free in the Northwest and Southwest regions that could uh, make it clear that companies eligible on the tax-free in these regions, you must be using at least uh, from 70 to 80 percent raw materials. Then I ask a part of from the Supermon company in Moyuka, which other company do we have in the Northwest and Southwest regions that can benefit from this uh, politics everywhere? Tanto is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Uh, Tanto, I myself will investigate more on that. I will eat the money because it's life. <laughs> Daniel is writing from Cape Town. Chop yes, body, chop yes body Daniel, uh, definitely, that is his choice. He wants to chop the money. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu, and I'm Cardinas uh, from Guti. I love your program. The ability to, to be rich solely depends on the willingness to work and save the little ones uh, we, are, we have. Mr. Liu, what about breaking through from the poverty cycle in Cameroon? Um, I'm sure most of the rich people in Cameroon were first. Uh, they are from very, they are from very poor mm, backgrounds. Exactly. Yes, they have, <laughs> they have cut through the poverty cycle. Good evening, Mr. Liu, um, Mr. Teke, and panisa We we 
problem is the those around us too discouraging like in the northwest and southwest when you see one don't need the government to make it they will call you a black leg <laughs> um in uh Bermenda, okay good evening mr leo good evening apparently uh, you people are doing a wonderful job i love this pro your program so much i am so inspired by the lady's presentation she's uh, such a resource person kudos to all of you in the studio i'm soon to start creating wealth thanks eric boston is writing from kutaba good evening to you uh good evening once again mr liu nganjo zakari writing from idea i wish to ask this question is it right for someone to save money in the bank at a primary stage of business or is it important for him to invest the money in the business uh, mr Tekesh should have taken notes he will provide an answer to that my name is regina i'm from bamenda can you lay emphasis more on what people can invest in because there are times you have some money but you don't know what to invest in you fear of losing the money and so the case is you should observe your community you should know those who live around you and know what they want provide it uh, to them good evening mr Liu. is alvin writing from adamawa i love your program good evening to you alvin uh miss l now um we want to create wealth but we also have to make judicious use of our time mm -hmm. uh, most uh, very wealthy persons sleep very less um you will not find them watching telling the yeah, for, for six hours yeah? mm -hmm. uh, so that they can show instead of showing what the worth you have you are showing people how you how best you master a series i think that um mm -hmm. that is also something that needs to be looked into now yeah the the importance of time management mm -hmm. when it concerns wealth creation time management is very very essential see if you stop working time will not stop working if you are sleeping time is still working it's still moving if you're working you're putting your hands to work time is still moving you can't stop time even when you sleep as in you're dead time is still working for the people who are alive now the, the the if we can be able to maximize our time and use our time wisely it's going to help us to grow financially the reason why we cannot even maximize time the reason why we cannot use time is because most of us are ignorant of the importance of joining up a schedule when we want to start up our day so of us get up in the morning we don't even know what what we want to do we don't know what we're expecting to be doing so as a matter of fact you only discover by the end of the day that you did nothing productive that day Take note, I mentioned doing something productive. It means you can do a lot of things in the day that are unproductive. Mm -hmm. You get up in the morning, like when you want to, the, there is a video I watch on YouTube, 10 healthy habits to develop mm -hmm. if you want to be able to uh, amass wealth, to mm -hmm. be successful. One of them is, they pointed out the fact that when people get up from sleep, what do they do? What do they do? It took me time to build my morning, my morning routine. And trust me, if I sleep somewhere else, when I get up in the morning, it's already so much in me that unconsciously I do it. A lot of us cannot even manage our time because we don't even know what we're supposed to do in our time. If you get up today and you know you're scared, you know, okay, I have to do this, I have to do that, and all of that. You program yourself on how you want to do it. Time management is very essential. If you cannot manage time, you will not be able to work with the rich. Trust me. Like what Mr. Buji said, you cannot work with Mr. Teke if you don't know how to use your time. It's, it's that I apply so most wealthy people you must know how to use your time if you know how to use your time now this is it you 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 link your time with your activities if you don't have activities you will not use your time wisely that's it and now most of us we draw up our schedules for the day and put activities that will not increase us in any way Say so for instance, you spend your whole day, the day is coming to an end, you're about to go to sleep, and there is nothing new that you've learned for the day. Every day that God has given us is an opportunity to move some steps closer to our destiny, some steps closer to purpose. And it takes a lot of activities, like what uh, Mr. Teke Samuel will quote, that tomorrow does not exist for a man who does not have activities for today. Now your tomorrow is determined by activities for today. And to make sure that you can meet up your activities, to know how much time you have, now, some people used to use this statement. I think when we were younger, we were writing the GC and all that, we used to use that statement like, 24 hours is not enough for me. Can God just add two hours 
and not the like. It's a lazy man that used that word. I remember the first that you said that was what somebody told me. That it's only a lazy man would, would, that would say that God add me two extra hours to the twenty-four hours you've given me. The one he's giving you, you are not using. And I know the highest person who used time wisely was God himself who did the creation. Imagine that from the beginning of the Bible, they talk about the days he was creating, how he did it every day. Meaning that there was already a plan on how it would be done. But you want to create what you know that you have to achieve this at the end of the month. You've not brought down your activities. You've not uh, brought down, uh, break down your, activi your activities, broken down your activities into how, on into how you want to be able to achieve. And every day you don't know what you're supposed to do per day. Trust me, you will discover that you've wasted a lot of time. And so if you want to use your time wisely, I've given us a secret. Have a schedule. Know what you want to achieve. You know what you want to achieve. You'll be able to put it all together. And away from that, talking about activities that are unproductive. There are many things we do that are unproductive. Like we mentioned about watching uh, televisions. I used to say like a joke, but it's what I did. I had to change myself away from the television for three years. Three years. Because I used to love, love watching some telenovelas and all that. Like I trained myself away from it. And trust me, it has gone to a point where I cannot even sit in front of the TV again. You can be able to train yourself like that. Because I know that there are two things that takes us out. The, t uh, the television and our phones. If you can walk away from this too, it will help you. The next thing is sleep. So many people sleep when they are supposed to be working. It's okay to rest. But not like you're sleeping when you've done nothing. Like you're just tired for doing nothing. You're just sleeping the whole day. Mm -hmm. People sleep like that. They sleep till night. Like, yeah. have you been sleeping for morning to night? actually say, uh, you cannot... So you want to, you <laughs> want to get rich, eh? you, you yes. say, if you If you want to actually create world... You cannot sleep as you're competing with the debt. Yeah. You, you make it as, as <laughs> and making making the land of the living. It does not work <laughs> that way. Go. Some people sleep. I'm telling you that they sleep to an extent where they can forget themselves in the sleep. Mm. Like okay. they can carry you and move you to another spot without <laughs> you knowing that. Like seriously, okay. if you should, if, even in your sleep, if you're active, even in your sleep, when you're sleeping, you discover your that will. your mind is working. Okay. That's how it is. Greetings, sir. Your program is so interesting. How can someone uh, with very big business ideas with no money raise uh, the required amount to start the business? Program, it's yeah. fun from, s uh, okay, fun. Please, just, uh, the number is there. Just call us. We'll get, we we'll help you out. Hmm? Hello to everyone in the studio. Everybody talks about a reading. How many books did uh, some of our old Cameroonian millionaires read before they became rich? Some didn't even go to school. As I heard, what is essential is having capital and investing. Yes, times have evolved here. Yeah. Yeah. I am sure the competitive spirit that reigns today is not what obtained uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Hello, Mr. Liu. I'm Buinui and owns a, a clinic. So as an entrepreneur, may the panelists advice enlighten me on how to grow. Thanks. I'm writing from Moa. Can you just call us after the program? Uh, the numbers are there on your screen. I uh, will help you out. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Congratulations on your award. It is just another step of your long journey to success. I wish to ask whether Text Global do buy business ideas. Liunga Elvis, writing from Boya. Uh, Liunga, can you just uh, contact them through the numbers on your screen? Good evening, Mr. Liu. Your program is so educative. How do I get Mr. Teke's books? Is uh, Mr. Acha Patrick writing from Tunga? Uh, Mr. Acha Patrick, right? Call me after this program. I will tell you how to get a book. Anybody, anybody who needs uh, the billionaire's mindset, that is a book that will turn your your life around. Uh, just call me. Um, I will. I will hand the book to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love the program, and I wish to ask where can one easily have the books uh, um, you are writing. Lopro is writing from Oku. Lopro, write me after the program, you get the book. Good evening, Mr. Liu. How much is the book, The Billionaire Mindset? And where do we have it? Okay, um, let's take a rendezvous after this program. I will tell you how to get it. Good evening to you, Mr. Liu. It's Mildred from Bank Kim. I want to ask how can I can engage into business? What are the stages I can follow? Please ask Mr. Teke. No, just call him using the numbers. He will, he will, he will tell you how to, 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 what stages to follow. Now, um, we also need to, to get, to make wealth. There is this issue of, um, 
miracle money, Miracle, miracle job, <laughs> miracle everything. How do we create wealth in this? Because it's everywhere now. Almost every young person now is in church. We want to create wealth. How do we strike a balance? I don't know what I'm saying. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, Everybody let me, wants to talk here. Let, 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 let me say something. Yes. That. The truth is this. You, you cannot take the place of work when wealth creation is concerned. The, the place of work must be there. God himself, when he wanted to create what we are seeing today, he walked mm -hmm. for a couple of days. That was the Almighty. He, he, I mean, it is written that he walked, and you, that was a result of work that he created. Creation is actually working. <coughs> you want to acquire money without working. I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's another form of expressing mental laziness. I must say that. Okay. Yes, um, church and the God blesses them. God blesses the works of our yeah, hands. blesses are my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I have my personal understanding of the word miracle. Okay, miracle is more of God granting you an opportunity to use what He has given you. Mm -hmm. That's miracle for me. Meaning, if I want a miracle phone. This is what he does. He does not put the phone in your hands. He gives you ideas that will place you in the position where you can get this phone he has told you to. But this is what we understand. When we say miracle phone, this is what we understand. That we will just sit and it comes. I know somebody watching me now will be like, okay, what about this um, cases where we see people in the church and miracle they lift money. up their phones miracle yes, and money, money comes in. <laughs> Let, let's not forget, somebody has your contact. Okay, quick question. Do you have a phone? Yes. If you didn't have a phone, how did the money come? There is always a route for a miracle to happen. It does not just fall. Go right to the Bible. Every person that God healed, that Jesus healed, mm -hmm. every person that experienced a miracle was at a position, was at a place. But most of us, we get uh, prophecies. And now this one thing I get very angry with. I'm talking as a believer. I'm talking as a born again. This one reason, one issue that I have with most of our pastors. You tell the Christians that God will bless them with this. And you don't tell them to position themselves for it. It doesn't work that way. If the, you are given a prophecy, if you tell a Christian if a, or a Christian gets it, that I'm going to, uh, that the Lord said he's going to bless with a job. It means he's saying that you should get your CV, leave your house and drop your application somewhere. You will not sit and it just fall from the sky. Even if they call you and say there is a job opening somewhere, the person that called you should, should know that you exist. I know. So they still networking in the I center. I know people like uh, um, Mr. Buji. They have fasted. They have grown pain. <laughs> in fact, in the morning they are they're in the in the church. They receive. I receive. I receive. In the evening they're in church. <laughs> One month, mm. two months. They are praying that it will happen. Mr. Leo. Yes. <laughs> the Bible says that. I will bless the works of your, of hand. your hands. Yeah. There are no two words to that. Mm. God did not say, <laughs> I will bless your fasting. I will bless your fasting. <laughs> no, you cannot acquire word through fasting or prayer. You cannot acquire word through uh, Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> it will not bring you money. Mm -hmm. It will not bring you wealth. You, have to, you have to do something. You have to work. You go to church and then you walk also. Yeah. Yeah. You walk, yeah. you are praying over this. If you are leaving your house to go and hustle, pray that God should give you the right connections. I think you are in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But you cannot be praying that you just get up and go to one room in your house and you see money. How would the money come? Just as you rightly said, to every miracle, for every miracle to happen, you must position yourself and there must be a connection. Yeah. There must be somebody. And one thing that you say, I believe that you are, for your miracle to happen, there must be somebody somewhere who will yes. trigger it True. god doesn't work alone god works through True. humans mm -hmm. that's why even for christ to have been able to accomplish his early mission he had to take human form so let's not forget that we must be able to understand the difference between this is what you call the uh, religious fanatism now mm -hmm. where people just we just believe anything that a man of god tells us even the one that is right or the one that is wrong. Or the ones that are fake and the ones that are genuine. Anyone tells you, before you follow God, make sure that you also acquire knowledge. In fact, yeah. the Bible actually requests that you should acquire knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because what? My people perish for lack of knowledge. So before you follow anybody, 
and make sure that you acquire knowledge. And when you acquire knowledge, pray that God should give you wisdom. Yeah. Because those, apart from that, money will never appear. Money will never appear. It must. If you save somebody and you pray, God will touch the heart of that person mm -hmm. to do something for you. Okay. I, if I may add, if I may add something, there's something you said, Mr. Liu. I also want to bring this out because we say it even in my own community, my own church community, we talk about this. Now, um, some people say that you have to go through the trials and the temptations mm -hmm. and go through the process. That's how we call it. Christians call it the process. You have to go through the process before you can be able to get to the point. So they're like, okay, that's why they're spending so much time in church from morning to evening. Now it's okay. But this is it. When you're in the process, you're waiting. It's either you are idle waiting or you're process waiting. There are two. You cannot be idle when you're when you're in the process. If you check everybody in the Bible that was waiting, don't tell us that you're not working because you're waiting, not doing this because you're waiting. Every person that was that's in the that was in the Bible that God gave them a promise that they had to do something. Jacob was out of his home. He knew he had to go back someday, but he was working for somebody. He was doing something. Why building himself for what God has prepared for him? But now most of us, this is what we do. We're like, okay, he says I should not do this now. He says I should not do this now. It's okay, but there is still something he has prepared that you should do God's at time. that time. God's time is the no. best. No. <laughs> Mr. Leo, you, know, you know something? There's something that, the that people time. forget. You can cry. You can weep. You can do whatever you want to do. But you know one thing about God? God is not emotional. What happens is that God, he has principles yeah. that when you follow, any other things follow. If you want yeah, Mr. world... Bo Mr. Bougie, God's time is the best. <laughs> <laughs> there is time for everything, is right? Is that, what, what I've noticed... God's what time I've, is the best. What I've, what I've noticed with, uh, some, uh, with some Christians is that they do all the prayer and fasting mm. and they can't connect to that source where they'll get that word, which is people. They, can't, they have a bad attitude. That makes people to run away from them. In fact, they are, they are quarreling with the next uh, person in the choir. They want to be the conductor <laughs> and they want to be everything in the church. Unequally, you. I think that we are oh, going yes. to discuss that because uh, <laughs> you do business. You do a restaurant. You are yolk. No, you do a restaurant <laughs> and you don't. You don't want to be equal, unequally yoked, but everybody consuming from your your restaurant. Uh, 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 unequally people now. <laughs> uh, maybe you are taking See, taxi. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, but no, it's, it's a, it's a okay. topic. It's a topic. <laughs> it's a topic. Uh, Mr. 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 Teke, I, I know you are enjoying the discussions out here. But Mr. Teke, um, we want to build wealth. I think that um, I have to to get more closer to you eh, because I know you are wealthy. I'm talking about surrounding ourselves with um, the, the the right persons who are also uh, um, who are having that mindset of creating wealth. Yes, um, this is it's it's very important. Our circles matter a lot as far as wealth creation is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, there is an error somewhere. Okay. When we talk about you identifying the right circles, hanging around successful people so you can be successful, uh, a lot of people misunderstand this and they think it of just just sit with them and be talking with them and wake up the next morning, sit with them, go back and sleep at home, or meet them and start looking at them and begging from them. Uh, there's a difference between um, hanging around people and participating with people. So when we talk about circles, we are talking about you identifying a particular set of people who are actually making it. Now, if you are going around them, go around them with one thing in mind, learning, what I call service. If you are hanging around successful people that you admire what is happening in their life, go there with one thing in mind, to serve. Number two, to learn. In the course of serving them, you will learn how they live their lives. But most people go around successful people to beg from them. That is why they can hang around them for as long as they can, yet they are still broke. Yeah. Because what they look at, they are more interested in what these people have in their lives and not what they have in their mind. If you hang around successful people with the intention of what they have in their lives, you are going to lose it. You will not be able to make it out. Even if they dash you money, you will lose it. Go around them and I will use the word steal. Steal their mindset. Copy their mindset. Rub them off their mindset. And that is what is going to create the difference. 
I know of people, I have seen people who have rich friends, but they are very broke. And sometimes people tend to accuse their rich friends. Like, how can you have this person around you and the person is broke? And people don't understand. I said something one day, I said, wealthy people are very complicated. You may not be able to understand them. So hanging around people that are wealthy is not enough. Are you hanging around their mindset? That's the most important thing. Hang around their mindsets. Now, some people, even when they hang around their mindset, they are too, too swift, too fast enough to want to demonstrate. Their pride will make them want to demonstrate to the rich people that, hey, I have learned enough, so I can also do what you want to do. And that's why I said at the uh, Audacity of Success conference, I said, no matter how much you have learned from people you look up to, never allow them to realize that you have known enough, never. The day you do that, they will stop revealing their secrets to you. But the average Cameroonian don't understand. We are too proud not to be able to hide what we have learned. No matter how much you have learned from a mentor, never you allow them see that you know enough. In 48 Laws of Power, there's a law that says that you should always let your mentor know that they always know more than you. In that, they will be able to teach you the deepest secrets of their lives. So hang around rich people, but don't hang around them for what they have. Hang around them for who they are. That is what is going to change the entire course of your life. We're talking about uh, people raise issues where you're reading your messages and talking about how you can break away from a poverty cycle. See, it is just one, the word is called anger. Until every one of us begin to get angry with the status of our lives, it becomes difficult for us to take drastic decisions on how to change the course of our destiny. We are too, we are too lazy, too, uh, too relaxed for success. The average Cameroonian is too relaxed for success. Things happen around you. You're not. If I talk about being angry, I don't say get angry and go and stand on the street and carry cutlass and carry guns or carry sticks. That's what I'm saying. I mean, be angry with your mind so much that you can sit down and decide to rewrite your story again. Anger is the only thing. As a matter of fact, anger is a gift that everybody is supposed to have if they must change the course of their lives. Everyone needs to be angry. If you get angry enough about what is happening in your present state, it gives you the willingness and the boldness to take drastic decisions. That's the only point where you decide the friends you want to keep, the decisions you want to take, the people you want to hang around with, the kind of things you want to do. They were talking about reading books. I said one that said, the average CEO read at least 32 books a year. That means you should dedicate your life to read at least one book every year. And someone is saying that how many books the uh, forefathers read that make them billionaires. Times are changing. We have a lot of competition in the world today. What made Alaji Danfodio rich? If he was in our generation today, he wouldn't be able to get that kind of money. People are now exposed. So you have to find out what is trending in the community and then you key into it. We're also talking about saving money. Is it right to save? Yes. As a matter of fact, savings is one of the ways you can raise there um we are going to continue with our discussions out here which um has to do with um, discipline and the fact that uh, we have to shun unnecessary expenses on issues that are not very important uh, for example yeah there are so many things that we spend money on uh, some occasions uh, somebody dies you have to raise um <laughs> capital eh, for a big business <laughs> to bury the person I think, uh, Mr. Leo, that that is a, that's a cultural issue mm -hmm. that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many people who uh, who wear suits only in their coffin. Mm -hmm. When they were alive, they did not have the opportunity to wear that suit. And those who wear them, that the, the suits, were there when those people were alive. You understand? We we have we we, we have this, this this idea of giving somebody a befitting barrier when that person does not have a befitting life. That we, this, I, I mean, as Mr. Taker Riley said, we, we need to get angry to change the situation. I'm, I'm, I'm so angry about this whole issue where we, we throw parties. And I'm not saying that we should not mourn their loved ones. That is very okay. You have to mourn your loved ones. But 
let's 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 try to balance life let's try to give energy to where energy can be multiplied don't give energy to a dead point i mean somebody has already died leveraging or lavishing so much money on that person has no use again to that person or to the people who are alive mm. so uh, uh it's, it's, it's something that we should use we should we, we, have, we, we should we should use that money for, for yes, capital for somebody it's, it's a, so it's, it's somebody's a, capital in the so family in that <coughs> the bad thing is that there are families that are never sat around the table to say okay mr buji is, is smart he if what if we, we contribute money and give him so that he can Five start a billion. business yeah. but if somebody dies they will sit and say mr buji you are the one who is going to make the coffin this person is going to pay those who are going to dig the grave this person is going to buy three crates of uh, and, and stuff like that why can't we develop that spirit that habit of also sitting when we need to do something that's going to generate wealth rather than always sitting when the result is a dead end. Okay, good evening, Mr. Liu. It's uh, Elmin from Yaoundé. Please, I would like to have a copy of the book. Elmin, please call me after the program and place your orders. Anybody who is watching, The Billionaire's Mindset is uh, that book that will turn your life around. We are talking about it's miracles, but I'm sure that um, this book is more than a miracle. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've read a book and things are changing around my life. Uh, you're already getting the contract to distribute it. So, so yeah. <laughs> are you a good evening, good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program. I'm Kadinas Iyabi from Nguti. How do I get uh, the Mr. Teke's book, The Billionaire's Mindset? Just call me after the program. You get the book. Good evening. I'm Felix from Kumba. I've read Teke's works of Billionaire's Mindset. And today I'm making at least uh, 300,000 francs a month thanks to his works okay uh good evening mr liu i like and enjoy the program it is uh foolish to use prayers when common sense and hard work <laughs> is needed miracle means doing something that seems impossible but becomes possible because of god janine is writing from duwala good evening mr liu and the entire panel good discussion and great ideas being shared God is one that gives us the ability to create wealth and this store, uh, the talents and gifts he has deposited in us. It is our duty to tap from this potential already available through hard work, discipline and prayers. Pray as do all dependent on uh, prayer and work as do all dependent on work. Roland Atanga is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening to you. Mr. Roland, Mr. Acha Patrick, you have just a piece of virgin land, no asset to site you need to invest. What can you do when you don't have the money missed from Tonga? Uh, please, there should be somebody who can help. You provide the land, the person provides the capital, and then you both uh, invest and uh, you share. Let me, let, me, yes. uh, let, me, let me add something. Let me add something. Mm. There's something that I grew up uh, and I saw my, 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 my mother doing with, with a, a group of other ladies. Mm. You understand? They Today, they will gather and come and till your farm, mm. and tomorrow they are tilling mm -hmm. the other person's farm. Yeah, that's my, something that. Yeah, my mom did that also. And that's Mr. how they, they, were, mm -hmm. they, were, they were operating without actually using money. Yeah, Mr. Leo, kudos to you and the team from Tex Global. If you have a passion for farming and you want to do a business, be, what do you start from? Um, okay, just write us here. We are going to help you out, please. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Please, I want to ask, uh, what kind of business can someone do with 100,000 francs? Mm -hmm. It's um, Michelle from uh, Douala. Michelle, call the numbers on your screen. I'm sure you are going to be advised. Uh, Alex says, good evening, Mr. Liu. I love what uh, Mr. Tekejo said. Hang around rich uh, people's mindset. I will add that by saying, do not hang around rich people's pockets, but around <laughs> their minds, okay? <laughs> Alex writing from, yeah, oh. but that is where the problem is yeah, now. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program. Thank you very much, okay? We love all of you too out there. Um, let us uh, have a view of what happened uh, in Douala last week, yeah. Hotel La Falaise. Uh, when uh, Tex Global organized the Tex Group. Tex Group. Of okay, it's Tex Group. Okay. Then all the companies. Okay, organized the Odyssey of success. Okay, let us see what happened. 
Very brief. Of success. Yes, to succeed. Of message of success. Yes, to succeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been a wonderful day from 7 a.m. right about now, and we are wrapping it up. A big thank you to Mr. Mike Gostin, Professor Modua, the Dio uh, Abba Abdul Rahman, Mr. Golov Jisong, all the high management team for tech uh, group of companies, and you, the most valued person today. I say I love you so much. This is just a beginning. We are going to make dreams come to reality. Yes. God bless you all. Cheers. And I love you. Come on. Okay. Uh, it was a successful Audacity of Success uh, program that uh, took place. Uh, that was last week here in uh, Douala. If you missed it, I'm sure you have yourself to blame it because you were told it was advertised. Everybody knew of it. And those who actually are craving to become millionaires, uh, billionaires, this, we are talking about investment. I think that was the rare opportunity to invest yeah. and to tap uh, into, yes, uh, tap into what uh, Mr. Teke is made of. Uh, you see, bringing people all the way from Nigeria, the registrar of the University of Boya, Mr. No, Professor Mulwa, uh, was there uh, to also uh, share. So if you did not, uh, yes, that's Professor Molua, uh, and um, those who did not go there should have themselves to blame, and they should be looking forward to the next edition of uh, that's the, uh, that is supposed to take place. Is it Yaoundé or Bamenda? I was still working on that, but there is an online uh, session. I think Mr. Buji will talk yes, more Mr. on the Buji. online session. Yes, obviously, uh, because of the cries of the people who are abroad, those who are in in fact, by the time the audacity of success was taking place, people were just calling me, please, can you put us online? But you know, we needed to do it in a way that uh, everybody would be orderly. So after that, we had to plead with Mr. Teke and his team that please, our people in Dubai, our people in the US, in the UK, in South Africa, in other African countries actually want to have a test of the audacity of success and obviously test the lion's stew by <laughs> 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 Professor <laughs> Molua. <laughs> so things like lion's stew, that's a lesson that when you learn, you start manifesting the tendency of a lion. You go out there to conquer the world, to become successful. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we will be organizing the audacity of success online edition mm -hmm. that is going to take place um, next month. Definitely, we are going to roll it out so you can get to us through our contacts and do a pre-registration. But within the by Monday, we will already release the information on how to get registered to the Audacity of Success online edition. If you are in Cameroon and you cannot and you did not could not make it due to one or two reasons, then I am not sure you will not give any excuse for not being part of the audacity of success because the online edition is for you and even if you attended and you are not still satisfied fine, you can come and tap more okay so uh, many of you are already writing how to get this book um Eli let them this I have copies you can these are my copies if you if you you, you bribe me I'll give you the copies <laughs> come. Yes, so uh, they are very limited yeah. hmm? and there's a French, French version and there is French th this is the French version and this is the english version so if you need it please call me after the program i'm sure i will tell you where to get the books uh in bomenda in yaoundi in kumba in boya and here in Douala. please just get us um let us know um mr teke i want to end the program with you from uh wherever you are taking apart from um mr teke now, we are looking at uh, making much money, creating wealth uh, for ourselves, for our families, and everybody, also to change uh, the face of our communities, because it starts with uh, wealth creation. Now, we are talking about changing our mindset, uh, also developing a, a, a discipline uh, spirit, but um, they are, we are also, also talking about... Uh, dropping of certain habits that um, do not pay us, especially uh, most of our social gatherings or social circles. Okay. 
Mr. Take okay, is emotions. Okay. Yeah, go on. Yes. Money has money has emotions. So there are certain habits you, can, you will put up, it will cost money to run away from you. For example, there are certain social gatherings you have to avoid if you really want to make money. There are certain things, places you don't have to stay if you really have to make money. There are certain friends you don't have to have if you really have to make money. So the way a human being has emotions and we want to work with them so we don't tamper on their emotions, that is how we also need to deal with money if we truly have to keep this guy. The way I call it, I call money guy because I have a way I relate with money. I talk to money, I speak to money, I play with money, I give money instructions, I tell money what to do. And the money feels, money listens, money hears, money sees. And so your habits, the kind of habits you put up, the kind of character or attitudes you put up towards money can tell if money can come to you or money can leave you. Now, this looks like a mystery, but truth be told, it is created, it's a natural tendency that was created to be like this. For example, if you have the tendency of always sending money away, always driving money out of your sight, now someone may ask, how do I do that? By your incensor spending. Anytime money comes to your hand, you want to spend it to buy this, spend it to buy that. You don't have the, the tendency to keep money. Money feel unloved anytime it comes to your hand. What do I mean? If you take your salary, natural, then average Cameroonian doesn't have the capacity to keep the salary for at least three days or four days before they start spending it. As soon as the salary gets into your hand, into your pocket or into your account, the next thing is we are making withdrawals. Thank God for ATM cards. You're making withdrawals and then you start buying things, start paying them, start doing this. When you do that to money, money says, hey, this guy doesn't love me. There's no need coming around him. And money runs away. But can you develop, grow to a level where you discipline yourself? No matter how much pressure I have on demands, when money comes into my hand, I will keep my money for one week before I start using it. I have a tendency. Let me give the, the people that are listening to us the entire world, I'll give you my secret. I don't spend money at the beginning of the month. I take at least three, four, five, six, seven days before I start sending out money. What I'm saying is, money, this is the beginning of the month. I want more of you. Stay with me. Let's relate. And then we talk, we discuss for like a week. And then we put a program, a plan on how we can actually send the money I have in my hand to go out there and bring others. So at the end of the month, I realize that I'm having a lot of money than what I have spent because I have showed money that I love you so much and I want you to stay with me, don't go away. These are habits people have to learn, people have to copy. It's, it's, it's not a natural thing with the average Cameroonian, but this is what people have planned. It begins from your mind. Plan it like this and you're going to realize how much money you make for yourself. So, Mr. Liu, I want to give me just a few minutes. Let me explain something. Someone asked you about if text global buy people's business ideas. Yes, 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 yes. The answer is absolute yes. Now, there's a new program in text global or text group of company we just introduced at the Audacity of Success. It is called Text Breed. Text Breed. Breed as in B R W E D. Now, what we do at Text Breed is whatever business idea you have, bring them to Text Breed. Register them at text breed. There's a team that will evaluate all the program, the, 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 the business ideas, and then pick the best business, the business ideas we have on that desk. We sponsor them. Now, the, the, the text breed is going to give you a uh, what is needed for your business to be sponsored because they will evaluate it. We have uh, uh, business people coming in, they evaluate the project, know exactly how much is needed for this project. They give you the money. Uh, without interest, you go run your business, say for one year, for two years, get the capital, bring it back to the organization. The organization uses the capital to sponsor another business. We started it at Audacity of Success. Now, this is our only little way of giving back to the society and helping those that think that they have all the ideas in this world, but they don't have money to sponsor their projects. Text breed, what you have here has come to solve that problem for them. I'm sure people we have in the studio can explain more about that so it's, it's no longer time for complaint we are getting into a state in cameroon where the narratives are changing and our youth need to understand that we have stepped into the wealthy place in cameroon 
we have stepped into the wealthy place and everyone needs to stand up and know that it is our responsibility take away the entitlement mentality walk yourself out cut off certain bad habits and put up the right character so that money can follow you okay mr take samuel i'm very happy of being uh, a part of this program today with the program i'm very sure that many youths who ravish their money on beer palace will grab some ideas on how to get money Mr. Samuel, I would really like to have a copy of your book, please. I'm um, Simon Elangwe, writing from Kumba. I wish you all a splendid night uh, there in the studio. Simon uh, Elangwe, just call me after the program. You have the book. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program. I'm Ashley, writing from Kumba. Good evening to you, Ashley. When you see Didi Bandiras, uh, the owner of Banga School, tell him I send him greetings out there in Kumba. Greetings, Mr. Liu. This is Elan writing from Bermenda. Please tell me how to get the book here in Bermenda. Uh, call me. Uh, I will make arrangements. I'll tell you where to get the book in Bermenda tomorrow. Hi, sir. Good evening, sir. I need advice on how to succeed in life. I will really be grateful if you help me. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu. In fact, I love your program and I wish to know if this program can be gotten from YouTube writing from Chang. Yes. Go to BT Media, uh, YouTube BT Media, uh, YouTube page. You are going to get all our programs. BT Media Group, uh, YouTube page. You are going to get all our programs. Or oh, you go to our Facebook page, My Media Prime. My Media Prime, as it's written there. That's it's it's on uh, screen there. You go to that page on Facebook. You get all the programs. Or you go to BT Media Group. YouTube page, you get all the programs. Also, uh, good evening, sir. What type of business can someone do with 200,000 francs? Is Steve Ange writing from Com? Uh, this one says, How much is the book? The Billionaire's Mindset. Uh, Mark Lord writing from Douala. Mark Lord called me after this. The seasons are uh, for seven partner we got. Okay, um, we have to end. At this juncture we will say we are grateful to the text global team coming all the way from boya to be part of uh, this uh, program just because they want to change cameroon change our mindsets but i also use the opportunity to those of you who reached who, who joined us late this is the award that was given to me on um, last saturday that no last friday in uh, yaundi i was given this award as uh, the best uh, uh, tv broadcaster for the year, the last year, so um, saying that is because you guys have been encouraging us uh, by watching the program and sending all these messages that uh, we were able to win this. So I dedicate all of this to you all watching um, my Media Prime every day. I also dedicate it to um, the workers of uh, my Media Prime. I dedicate it to the team producing this program, uh, Prime R. Eli, thank you. Uh, Desmond, thank you. Bertrand, thank you. Uh, Tamai Javis, thank you. Uh, Kaiser Michelle, thank you. And uh, the big boss, Tabi, Tame Bryant, and Madam, I say thank you. I dedicate all of this uh, to you. Oh, no, I will not forget. Uh, Junior and Prince at home, I also dedicate this to them. <laughs> and also to my lovely wife, uh, Cynthia. I say thank you too for always standing by us and uh, also thank you to you Tex Global uh, Group. Mr. Teke, thank you for taking part in today's edition of the program. Thank you so much, Mr. Leonard, and trust me, we are going to get you an envelope. Since that award did not give you an envelope, we are going to give a, get an envelope for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very, very, very much, and uh, we hope that um, we will continue our efforts. But please, if you did not... Um, if you do not yet have a copy of the billionaire's mindset please get to us we are going to give you one so that when you read it you will know that uh, things can happen yeah. yes uh thank you for coming uh thank you so much mr leo it's always a pleasure to come and share my ideas <coughs> with our people and also learn from them and at least the the comments are coming it shows that uh People are actually speaking of the rhythm. So many people travel from far and near and attended the audacity of success. I mean, people are getting enlightened. People are asking questions and seeking answers. And I think my media prime is doing an amazing job mm -hmm. to enhance this. So uh, let's keep doing what we are doing. And certainly, we are going to leave the stage better than we met it. And to you, thank you for coming, Mr. Buji. It's always a pleasure being here. And to you out there, viewers. 
thank you for watching and thanks for your contribution and i will challenge you to dare to succeed mm -hmm. don't complain and if you miss the physical event don't miss the online edition please don't miss it because there is no way you can survive with this in the 21st century with the mindset of the 19th or 18th century okay miss er thank you for coming Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And to add to that, I'm inviting you all for a free event on the 30th of this month at Shep Academy in Boya. We're going to be talking about how to fund your dreams. And okay. it's sponsored by Mr. Teke Samuel. So we encourage you to come. And as Mr. Buji said, keep daring to succeed and let's change the narratives together. Okay. Mr. Teke says there's going to be an envelope for this. <laughs> If you think that okay, you should, yeah, you should sure. <laughs> if you think that you should join him <laughs> to put an envelope for this, I would not regret to. But Mr. Deke, thank you very much in advance. All right, sir, you're doing a good job for us. Thank you so much too. Okay, thank you to all of you who took time off to watch uh, the program, the production team. Stay blessed. Bye bye. Amazing.